Oh boy, I got a treat for you today, guys. Oh man, He-Man, Master of the Universe, or one can say Master of the Multiverse, by the power of Grayskull. But before we get into all that crazy, ridiculous stuff and how godlike he is, thank you all that have donated to the channel. Appreciate it a lot. He-Man has a couple forms of media, but he also has media in DC Comics. Some might not know this. His real name is Prince Adam of Eternia, but his alter ego is He-Man. Throughout all his adventures, pretty much protecting the secrets of Castle Grayskull, he fights against the evil forces of Skeletor, his main villain. But when he's Adam, he acts as a kind but sort of naive, foolish, idiotic prince. But when he's He-Man, he's brave. He has a good heart though, intelligent. He's kind of pacifistic, rarely throwing the first punch and tries to solve issues peacefully and empathetically. They're trying to make an example to not start fights, people. <laughs> He's kind of dubbed the most powerful man in the universe and for good reason. Prince Adam was born of King Randor of Eternia and Queen Marlena, aka an Earth woman, but that's when his life was changed. Plot twist, the main villain has to be somebody you know <laughs> because you already know that's how things work in fiction to add more depth to it. His uncle ended up being Skeletor. Surprise, surprise. In his weaker Adam persona, he tried to stop him and failed. It's like beating the main boss in the first level. That's not going to happen. You got to wait to the very end. So he wasn't ready for him at this exact moment, as you can see. During this origin or encounter with Grayskull, he recognized his destiny by the sorceress that has kept watch over Crystal Grayskull until the day you came. She states, he's not really physically there though, but at the same time, you know, he's his mind has journeyed there, you know, because they got to find a way to give him his destiny. <laughs> He has to make sure that Skeletor does not take the power sword, the special power sword, part of his standard gear. Your power sword, she says. Right now, he's kind of frail and scared of everything at the moment, but he has to stop this war. He states here, when King Grayskull left this mortal plane, he warned of a war between two of his own blood. The end of the world stands at the gate. Prince Adam is the one that needs to stop all of this, aka He-Man. With the power sword, he will say the special words and he will be the one and only He-Man. All this happened while he was getting evidently attacked by Skeletor, by these beams or attacks. As you can see here, she did say the power sword will be in his reach. And it is. And that's when he became power incarnate. I was torn on whether to go over the cartoon feats and the comic book feats, but a lot of them kind of go hand in hand. They imply it to be in the same multiverse, if that makes sense. One of his standard gears is his magic sword, power sword, when he says in the power of Grayskull. By the power of Grayskull. Power of Grayskull. Ranger became the mighty battle cat, and I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Well, that explains it pretty clearly, right? Even in the cartoon version, he's shown godlike stuff. He's strong enough to push the moon with raw strength. You can get an idea of how strong He-Man is by the fact of how strong is She-Ra consistently. Twin sister, literal twin. She-Ra even grabbled the moon. As you can see, that's comparable to He-Man's feet like that. And kicked it like that. <laughs> <laughs> and again, hooked it, pull like you never pull, that type of power, you see that? The feet run just started, and he can already lift quintillions of tons, and the feet run just started. <laughs> oh my goodness, he man's a beast. Let's get into what he's done in the comics, though. Even as a prince, he's not somebody you would call weak, like being able to lift somebody up on one arm and stuff like that. He has also training, and he's very skilled, believe it or not. Tosses folks with one arm in training, and etc. Being able to counter, parry, things of that sort. Prince Adam ain't no joke. Battled this battle cat one time, as you can see how much larger it is seems to hurt it would punch but yeah it's still bigger and more superior physically i heard it that's a good thing <laughs> He pulled out the sword of power while being weighed down by Battle Cat. He ain't just no trash. The same being that was able to lift the building. <laughs> As you can see, he just blocked an attack from him. This guy named Trap Jaw blocks another attack from Trap Jaw, showing his swordsmanship skills as well. Told you he's skilled. Agile enough to leap around Battle Cat like that or over him. I don't know how this is possible, but it's implied that he moved faster than the eye can see. See the dude with the axe? He literally stole the axe, and the dude's looking at himself like, huh? What's, what happened? He stayed it trade you see uses axes slicing and dicing kind of was able to get away from semi-automatic fire while wielding a sword kicking and stuff in combat like usual speaking of trap jaw like you literally see throws an axe at him right there evades the attack right there showing his competence doing all this while powerless by the way just so you don't forget as prince adam he be fighting superhuman stuff like merry man stays conscious and 
ecstasy right here even though it's implied he is outclassed he even states here heat man is dead blocks an attack here kicks him back right there even though that kick didn't seem really to do damage <laughs> survives this massive tidal wave like you can see like all that no landborn creature could have survived such a blow skeletor would be most pleased works for skeletor as you can see but yet yeah, they did <laughs> one can say this is kind of like a willpower feat <laughs> he survived an encounter with man at arms after this beating getting punched through freaking trees getting slung stuff that normal humans with no power shouldn't be able to take Yet he's still able to endure it. He even had a grenade go off on his side. Showed a little bit a couple seconds ago. He fought Tilla, showing more cases of his straight up hand to hand combat. To prove yet again he is competent, fighting on par with other hand to hand combatants. Trading blows, quite a lot of evidence that he doesn't just need his power. He's just not useless without him, showing that he's got discipline enough to actually have fighting skills, if that makes sense. Even while powerless, he took on a bunch of trap jaw slavers, like as you can see right here. I showed a little bit of this earlier, evading the bullets or gunfire, kicking, fights them off, sword combat, respect it. Not only did he fight Beastman powerless, but he was also memoryless. That kind of shows you just can't forget skills. Even if you lose your memory, one can say muscle memory. These people are obviously stronger than him, but yet he still holds his ground with weapons, strategies, tactics intuition muscle memory stabs him there put in that work punch and he's sleepy that's how you know he's got skills and no that was not head cannon about the muscle memory is even stated here by this same beast that was defeated goes going to skeletor his mind does not remember but his body does further implying muscle memory more implications of prince adam's skills when he's not he-man aka powerless a woodsman axe he was armed with a simple woodsman's axe yet he would it as if it were a battle axe ha <laughs> But let's wind the clock back quite a bit when he was younger right fast. As you can see here, he states, Inconceivable, impossible. The boy's holding on with all his strength, refusing to let the future come to pass. Every single moment from now to the end of time, Adam is here struggling to lift weight and free his father. He states, by the sorceress, he's tapping into the power of eternity. After getting a tiny portion of the power of Grey Skull, you know, the power that's where he's going to become the He-Man later on in the future. He's able to lift his girder, as you can see, just a tiny bit of the power, trying to help his father, like in this panel here. All right, let me fast forward in time a little bit when he is He-Man and stuff like that. Beings that try to take over his soul or mind, this is a common thing in fiction. When you're a certain level of power, there's a high probability you will have resistance or in some cases, a complete immunity, slicing and dicing with the axe you can see here to mind control or soul stealing or soul or mind manipulation. These creatures or beings doing as such, using a shield, axe, and etc., slicing and dicing, looking epic in the process. He-Man, respect him for sure. Hey, youngin. Can't take over his mind and soul. Plot twist. Adam is the power of Grey Skull. Ooh, shocking. Doesn't get his power from the power of Grey Skull. He is the power of Grey Skull. Battling with Skeletor. It states here the sword is the control, the funnel through which you channel. Power that is and always has been is rightfully mine. A lot of people think that the power it channels the power of Grey Skull to him. Your mistake has always been your ego driven insistence that the sword channels the power of Grey Skull to me. From me, Uncle, I am the host. The sword channels the power of Grey Skull from me. I don't just have the power. I am the power. Adam is the power. Not the sword, Grayskull. Let it be known. Which is why moments like this happens where he gets glimpses of his power. It states here he's tapping to the power of eternity. This is kind of implications of it even at a young age. For even coming fully He-Man. So it kind of adds up. Remember that soul possessing crap I said in earlier? It's kind of like a willpower feat. Mental head strong thing that a lot of characters in dc or marvel even have it states here there is a reason why he's having a difficult possessing you entirely there are key moments in your life where you display the virtues that made you worthy of he-man's power he possesses courage wisdom kindness and strength these are the parts of you that are harder for beings like this to consume he has all the right virtues you can't just possess all this he even found a way to share or scatter the power of gray scroll throughout to everyone as He-Man, he has a lot of displays of strength, uh, <laughs> crossover fun. You see Supergirl up there. <laughs> then tosses the ship aside. <laughs> Injustice crossover, don't judge me. <clears throat> Just having fun. Stuff that he can do because he's done better feats than this, so yep. Hey, beings that I fought with no powers, hey, yo, y'all gonna get flexed off when I got my power. Get murked. Trap jaw and all you folks when I didn't have no powers. Y'all ain't ready now. Hey, Bane from DC, I get your attack block. He-Man likes lifting giant statues. Hey, Lionel, it would be wise to not try to bury him. He just want to break out. No one buries the power of Grayskull. Ain't that right? Because he is the power with his density increased as well. 
trying to bury him. It stated here, your density is increasing exponentially. Soon you'll be so heavy you'll plummet through solid rock. But yet, this didn't matter. Get murked. Get an idea of his power. When he clashes, he can create massive explosions, shockwave type impact. Fun statue lifting with Lion O. He man, can you stop bashing people with their own statues? Sheesh. Slife, you're going to get sent flying. Too strong. Got in a battlefield with Lion O. The guy he had a death battle with. Sword clashing. He even fought Injustice Superman. Sent him flying this one time. Does this to a magical clone of Superman. Blocking attacks. Fighting speed. Kicks him so hard. It's like a literal boot in his chest. I mean, they even state, you're strong. It states, good. I'm sick of always holding back. There's these magical chains that Superman can't really break out. But hey, they're magical. That could be the reason why. He-Man was able to slice apart these said magical chains. He-Man tears apart a giant monster. Punches this king into outer space. <laughs> Noted they was in the afterlife. So yeah, it's kind of hard to measure the length of what he got punched. Snake Man try to fight He-Man. Get it off of me. Shock waves just flexes them off. Hello, Flash. Punches the Flash that way. See this big cube? He don't need his sword to rip it apart. He can rip it apart with his bare hand. Seems to be blocking his staff. This king being, I showed you get punched in the space, reaction time, and etc. This giant magical being gets sliced and diced apart. He-Man has even broken the power sword itself. For a little while, it was believed the power sword was the thing that was giving him his power, but of course it was channeling his power, but it has to have a certain level of durability or, or etc. to be able to channel all this power all the time. Not to mention this class with a lot of its beings or arch foes like Skeletor and etc. Yet He-Man can just break this with his raw power. Here's some more lore about him right here. It states here, for those confused about the power of Grayskull or the power of Eternity, it's kind of one and the same. The power of Grayskull kind of became or become the sword of Eternity over time. It states here, that it's not the sword of power you first wielded as He-Man. It has become the sword of eternity. Within it lies a power that only Adam can unlock. If He-Man is willing to pay the price. Yep, but yep, yep. It kind of lets you know how powerful he is. That the fact that he broke something that was channeling in his power. He was willing to sacrifice his He-Man status for this. All of this was kind of linked to a predestined future. It's like a fate or destiny. He kind of broke destiny by breaking his sword. Saying that the future is no longer set. It's almost like all of this stuff was like a literal timeline one could say don't want to reach too far but it's like it breaking it literally broke the line on which destiny was already set but now they broke the line aka the sword so destiny isn't no longer set if that makes sense when it comes to just visual speed feats i don't think he has the most flashy looking feats but if we were to take that scaling and superman and stuff seriously he would be obviously massively faster than light but yeah i'm just going to show the actual visuals right Sword combat here, blitzing there, like being able to react to these different Supermans and or these clones of Superman. It's kind of a big deal if you were to look at it in that way. Stabbing him in the chest, magical sword, by the way. Being able to block heat vision should make his reflex at least close to light speed, right? Of course, battle feet with Skeletor. I mean, duh. I mean, he had plenty of battles with Skeletor. He's redirected that blast while after they were fired, as you can see there. And just as Superman was doing like a bull rush, he kind of like intercepted the bull rush, showing some speed. Also fighting on par with Injustice Superman, by the way. And he saved a woman from suicide. You're welcome. He has insane stamina and endurance, like fighting for a full day and night. Take this blast and was fine afterwards. This and they thought they won. That did not work. Snake Man. Trap Jaw's jaw got disintegrated with this disintegration gun. He man got hit. Disintegration gun and it just kind of didn't do anything. Gets blasted here. He's back up. Literally walked off an explosion and crashed from this airship. Look at all that. Destruction gets back up. He <laughs> takes the blast and explosion. Everyone okay? We're not going to ignore how he just ate this heat vision in the eyes though. Like I showed earlier fighting Superman or the fake clone of Superman. Look, his eyes seem to be okay or it could be he just regenerated real fast. Beings in this tier usually have a better than average healing factor just by it pure assumption. But it's not a bad assumption, right? Well, it's not really an assumption because he did get stabbed in the chest. Yep, as you can see, showed a little bit of this fight earlier with this same being. Mumra, impaled, I have the power. See how it's like the wound is just like gone. So it is implied he has some type of healing factor. A little bit longer panel of the same fight I showed a little while ago. As you can see, he never had a wound in the first place. If you stab him in mortal form and then he summons the power, it just kind of transmutes him to the godlike form. And it's the healing or any type of flaw on your body is instantly prepared, I guess. Even stay here, I've scoured the multiverse for potential dangers to my world. And he fought He-Man here, took a heat vision blast and recovered. Things like that. Hey, equilibrium defibrillator blasters gets blasted on my chest. And I'm eating them all up because I'm super durable, but he says my ears were ringing. Got in a plenty of fights like Mum Mater, keeps on fighting after all these attacks. Even smacked with a staff, a hey Lionel, and they keep fighting. He got struck by Dark Oracle this one time. Batman, Flash, 
Wonder Woman. Slugfest, plenty of Slugfest with Injustice Superman and is fine afterwards. And they fight together, power struggle. Oh yeah, he does show his skills while he's fighting in his powered up state, not just his powerless state. He showed skills in his powered up state. Keeping up with other skilled warriors in combat using the sword, kicks, dodging, parrying. It even stated in narration and he made himself the greatest warrior of all. This was in tandem with all these other great warriors. Alongside Tilla, he even fought of course, another Cajun of Skeletor fighting his army, showing his skills in combat together. I love sh shots like this, grabbing with his hands, with his sword, Tilla, respected, blocking. Armies get obliterated at their might and skill. They can even make subtle approaches, like using stealth, for example. Stabs from behind, they wait until nightfall, or they slip into the... Don't you love the DC interactions? Lobo, Grundy, Gride, Deathstroke, and Killer Frost fall to his strength evidently but he doesn't always have to fight the dc people there was one time like i showed panels of this earlier fighting billions of trollians with superman fought alongside the man of steel he even gave superman the power sword to use so he can fight them in hand-to-hand -hand combat showing he's competent the power sword can do other things like opening dimensional rifts you know that here they call it power of eternity you might see a lot of reoccurring themes sometimes you might hear them call it by the power of gray school power of eternity same thing Got the name got replaced after the time went by. You know, that type of thing. Like I said earlier, the sword can warn you of danger. It can fire energy blast. It can even project lightning, emit lightning. So he has elemental type of damage output. I mean, the fact that he obliterated two crypt tech towers with this electricity. He's able to call down lightning. I have the power that like, look at all that lightning in the background. As you can see while fighting, all of that is crazy. He literally called down the lightning the size of a city. To help him out and wrecking stuff. Big armies go night night because of this. She Ra and He Man have worked together before. Working together, they destroy the fright zone. All of that blast power. It's alternate dimension powered by fear. This is no easy feat because beings like Moss Man and Elder God of Eternia had to sacrifice his life to do the same feat to the fright zone. Something that He Man and She Ra just did with blasting with their electric blast or energy projection. One could say respect it. There's one time he destroyed this reality warping artifact with the power of Grey Skull. Hordax Prime Skull might have had during the DC comic event. By embracing this power of the He-Man, of course, he doesn't get sick as much. There's this time reality warp to where he was never He-Man, but the power of eternity is basically his destiny to the point where it let him know what his true past actually was. This was thanks to that Hordak Prime Skull that I showed you in Blast <laughs> helped Skeletor get amped up. Skeletor is amped up by Hordak Prime Skull. It even gives him visions of possible futures to see what he could possibly be. It's like he's linked to the timeline. Even had interactions with Superman back in the day, even during the pre-crisis era. Yes, He-Man is always combat training. As you can see, more displays of his power. Say twisting that weight like that. Twisting up steel. It's also nice to mention that characters like Skeletor and He-Man, supposedly, you know, Skeletor was controlling Superman during this fight. It states Superman has fallen prey to a power beyond any he has ever encountered. That might be a hyperbole, but at the same time, that means he must they must be somewhere in that range of power. They even stay here between the strongest of the two dimensions. Even the writers intend for Superman's power level to be able to move planets like it's nothing, like just like his pre-crisis era. But yet He-Man is able to twirl them around like this. Slugfest, he did stagger him quite here though. No matter which version of He-Man you want to look at, he's a planet buster, can lift planets just like in this cartoon, he can do it. I mean, even in the DC comics, even in pre-crisis days, even on panel they stated that same Superman he was slugging it out with could move planets like it's nothing. He-Man should do this well because moving planets in DC isn't really that big of a deal considering having black hole feats and etc. or even higher or even near universal or multi-galactic level feats that DC have. You know what I mean? Even though he's technically is the power or whatever, he whatever. Castle Grayskull is the goal of this whole show. That's what Skeletor is trying to get in possession of, that type of thing. He's powered by this, so you kind of got to get an idea of how strong he is based on how strong this actual Castle of Grayskull is, even in the animated version. Even animated stuff had some comics too, <laughs> or it had same similar comic art, or there was interactions with the multiverse from the cartoon into the multiverse, interacting with other versions of themselves, implying that their power should be similar throughout the multiverse. Different versions of these characters should be around the same power as well. But I know that's getting confusing, but let me just show you what I mean. In the earlier panels that he is the power, but then he stayed his power body. Let me just say he just didn't unleash his full potential up to this point. Well, let's get into where he did unleash his full potential of the power. It's kind of like his power, like it's his, but other folks are trying to steal his power, if that makes sense, right? Even if most of the stories, he doesn't even have control of all of his 
power. I hope that makes sense. That brings me to his ultimate mode. He is the master of eternity. He actually gained full control of the power of eternity. League stronger than anything I've showed you up to this point. And to get an idea of how strong he is like this, you got to get an idea of how strong Castle Grayskull is, which is just basically his power. He owns it, but you know, you can kind of steal it. You know what I mean? It was stated whoever controls Castle Grayskull controls the universe. It is built with the magic that governs the universe. Eternia is home to the magic that created the universe. If our world were to be destroyed, the very fabric of reality would unravel. As Eternia fares, so fares the universe. Skeletor with all of this power is stated to be able to destroy the entire universe. What a thought! The same power that he may ends up mastering as the master of eternity. This is just showing past scans of this stuff. To add lore to why he man becomes so overpowered this is just the tip of the iceberg it gets worse you wielders of this said power were able to shatter the star seed why is this important you're asking well the star seed is an object or orb containing the residual energies that created the universe in turn those same universes created every universe across the multiverse including mine Masters of the multiverse. Yeah, there's a like an actual multiverse. Skeletor is amped more than ever before. It had like universal stakes. It even states here. Now it is the universe that needs saving. Stopping time right before death incarnate Skeletor destroyed the universe, dispelling the flames of Horkoth and achieving his new looking armor and sword and etc. It even states here, can you hold on to time as he did before? Like he did that before, like time manipulation, I guess. Looking epic, he stretches it into eternity, powered up, dispelling the flame. Why is this impressive dispelling these flames of Horkoth? In a possible future, these same flames were shown to be able to destroy a universe. In a possible future, they wanted to prevent this from happening, like the prophecies and all that good stuff down here. In his new godlike state, Master of Eternity, He-Man, new armor and everything, fights this very powered up version of Skeletor, Master of Death incarnate Skeletor might I add he even summoned souls absorbing all the souls in the universe to dispel Skeletor's army of the dead as you can see he says for Eternia it's a crazy war fight it even states here every death in the universe now feeds me and inhabits me I am the multitude death incarnate I have forged myself the ultimate power weapon of death and fused it to my very body he's literally fighting summon souls from this overpowered Skeletor the Eternia war was nothing to trifle with he man puts in that work but hey they go at it it even shows his headgear getting messed up here showing that yeah it's a fight battle is tearing attorney apart as collateral bro can you imagine all this animated how the invincible show was that would be epic to see what i said earlier together with every last soul in the universe i defy you i will push back the darkness stabs with its power sword disintegrates him in the process we have the power castle grayskull rises again before he even became death incarnate this is just a reference to skeletor's power he was destroying planets across the cosmos by simply forging the sword like he was destroying planets by forging the sword planets are collateral because it is it stays here across space time world shattered as the shock waves hit them castle gray skull all this is before he became death incarnate skeletor it just gets crazy during the turn of war as you can see death incarnate one of the best looking designs i've ever seen i have to admit oh you guys know who skeletor is in base at their peaks he was amped up more than ever before in this master of death incarnate skeletor version he man defeating him is impressive because this same skeletor powered up like this had the power to defeat the source the of creation the goddess herself the star sea which is evidently the source of all creation of this he man multiverse and they wasn't talking about like one universe they're talking about the multiverse the he-man multiverse they said but the multiverse is vast and complex i ended up reeling from one rally to the next i saw a thousand different versions of attorney across hyper time that's a dc term dc has multiple multiverses and then one omniverse you, you get it this is how powered up skeletal wars evidently there's times where other beings other than skeletal had the power like hordak for example had the power hordak means to conquer the universe and remake all of creation in his image evidently this same power source that skeletor was amped with was able to do such things oh yeah and by the way their multiverse does have an infinite number of dimensions by the way into the infinite universe contained within the star sea like i showed earlier when it was at their peaks they get ridiculous but even normally it's implied that they still are in that universal or multi-galactic ranges here it states all knowledge and energy in the universe in the hands of your greatest enemy the demon wizard skeletor this is consistent throughout his lore nothing really contradicting it for those that are confused the star seed and goddess are the same thing how strong is this star seed or one could say goddess how strong is it they described it 
as all consuming infinite power like very vague but that's how they described it i showed you how a version of he-man already destroyed the star seed aka the goddess showing his level of power not even being at his prime self doing stuff like this. Same is like this again. The mother goddess is the source and heart of all creation. She is fire from which our universe was born. The last relic spark of creation now rages in the forge of grace code. That is what you are fighting to protect. But can any one man truly claim the goddess light? And this aspect of the goddess, aka the star seed, will destroy the universe of light and usher in a new universe. And possessing full might of gray skull, it's implied that you're omnipresent, the past, the present, the future. I can reach you anywhere. It's like you're higher dimensional when you reach the full power of gray skull. More displays of its power. The universe shakes. Eternity cannot hold fires I showed you earlier. These crossovers with DC aren't just random crossovers without no explanation. It's implied that this is actually happening. It even states here to the deepest recess of Castle Gray Skull to the nexus of all realities that cast you from your universe into my world without even using those battle feet without even bringing up dc characters he's still up there although his power source has been relatively the same it seems to be a big distinction on the power it has given him in the stories for example like majority of his fights he wasn't as powerful as he was in the attorney war the war to where he became master of eternity so that's why it seems to be a big difference by the power of grayskull by the power of eternity it seems to be a difference it's like it gave him more power the castle in turn being able to blast with the sword better being more physically better Better, more physically superior sword having more blast power and things of that such so it doesn't really matter which he-man i talk about comic or animated seems to be universal ish if that makes sense because remember animated he-man evidently did this to the star sea remember that the star sea is the source of all creation aka the goddess itself that's universal plus blast power durability whatever you want to say attack potency stuff like that Notice how the it stated, like I showed earlier, the star sea, an orb containing the residual energies that created the universe. Those same energies created every universe across the multiverse, including mine. See what I mean? They're pretty much the same when it comes to power levels. Because if you remember what the comic one did, becoming the master of eternity in the Eternia War. Big event. There's no exact science to this, but he became the master of eternity, way more powered up than he ever before, stopping the universe from being destroyed. I know I've said a mouthful so far, but to keep it safe, I would say he has multi-galaxy type punching power just in their base. Not really an exact science to it. It's not like they straight up told us they're this powerful because they're amped by a multiversal or a multi-universal power source, which is this castle. So I would say this castle gives him this much power at this given time. But during the later events, when he became master of eternity, it decided to give him more power than ever before. And that's when he became multi levels of power with the new armor and everything. Statements like this is clear evidence. This is evidence of their power. All knowledge and energy in the universe and the greatest enemy. So yeah, it's plenty of lore right in intent. Stated here, like I already shown, whoever controls the castle controls the universe. Another statement, Eternia is home to the magic that created the universe. More proof that he's in DC, that is indeed Constantine. He was telling about all the different versions. Skeletor has seen of himself throughout the multiverse because it's complex. Even the cartoon version, heck, even a toy. And yes, it is implied here that Castle Grayskull actually does contain power. No, I was not playing. It's literally a multiversal type of thing. The different He-Mans, even the cartoon version has met like different He-Mans in the multiverse. It even states here, Adam, I'm you from another universe. The reason why this multiverse was going on, they was going to different universes to stop these anti-He-Man. Like you literally see an anti-He-Man. <laughs> yeah, it's like literally different versions of He-Man like fighting side by side. Like, yeah, an animated version, you know. If you still have your doubts about the He-Mans having similar power levels, if they wasn't at similar power levels and one of them was just a planet buster while the other ones are just universal it would make sense for them to have occasions like this when the he-mans are working together contributing if they're all just fleas in comparison to one another it wouldn't make sense on why they're working together now would it it's pretty obvious that the different he-man are not fleas in comparison to one another the main reason the stakes were so high is because there was this anti-he-man that was taking the power swords from other universes, taking them from other He-Men, draining their castles of their immense magical power and adding it to his own, often leaving murder in his wake. With each new absorption, he grows in strength, allowing him to increase the frequency of his attacks. Even now, he walks the paths of the inter-realms, making his way toward his final destination, the Power Prime, the source that feeds the power of all Castle Grayskulls in the multiverse. As powerful as Castle Grayskull is, something that could devastate a universe, he's trying to get the power source of all 
the Castle Grayskulls of the multiverse. They even go as far as stating here, if anti-He-Man succeeds in attaining the power prime, all of the multiverse will become his control. Seeing this on the fact that he's fought pre-Crisis Superman, it all makes sense too. We already know how crazy pre-Crisis Superman was. Shoot. Heck, even normal Superman for that matter is overpowered. I think it's pretty established that he's in DC, but if, if you want to assume he's not in DC, I have plenty of evidence to show that he's top tier without being in DC, but then add on the fact he's in DC, fought pre-Crisis Superman, that's pretty freaking crazy. I would definitely say he's concrete Superman level at least. And at the end of that story in that comic book series, War of Eternia and etc., I think he probably surpassed his base state as a, a higher than Superman level being at that moment in time. Superman can of course catch up if he's sun dipped or something, but I'm saying at that moment, you know, Castle decided to give him extra power when he became his prime, prime peak that he's ever been ever before. Even though he has the same power source, it seems like he's, he seemed like the power source decided to give him more power in different occasions, you know, if that makes sense. But put your comments down below. This was a nightmare to make. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Respect He-Man. What did you learn about He-Man? Did you know he was this strong? Did you know he was this closely associated with DC? Did you know even his animated version was this strong? What do you guys think? I think he's pretty cool. Later, check out those playlists so I can see you guys later. Respect He-Man.